Man on writing complicated scripts in PowerShell, variables are still something that you're going to run across quite a bit. Here's a simple variable. In PowerShell, a variable name can consist usually of letters, numbers, and underscores. So that's a legal variable name. The variable name does not include the dollar sign. Only everything after the dollar sign is actually the variable's name. The dollar sign is just a, a cue to the shell to tell it that you want to access the contents of that variable. So a command like that accesses the contents of the variable named var underscore one and puts the number five inside of it. And it's kind of cool how you can just play with variables here right at the command line. You don't have to have a script or anything else. You can create these things, manipulate them, anything you like. For example, I can have services equal get service. This creates a new variable named services, takes the output from the get service command and places it into the contents of that. Again, the dollar sign is telling PowerShell that I want to access the contents of the variable named services. Now you can have a really complicated pipeline on the right side of the equal sign. For example, I can create this new variable called processes. And by the way, there's no need to declare a variable up front or announce that you intend to use it. You just do it. So I've created a new variable called processes. And I'm going to set it equal to the output of get process, sort. And let's see, let's sort on the physical memory property. And let's do that in descending order. And then let's only keep the first 10. So this entire pipeline is going to run, and its output, instead of being displayed on the screen, is going to wind up inside the variable named processes. And now I can just look at processes to see what's inside of it, and I get all of those objects out just as if I had run that command interactively. Now it is possible to create a variable name that has spaces in it. I don't know that I would call that a best practice uh, because it certainly makes the, the syntax a lot harder to read. But what's going on here is the dollar sign, again, tells the shell that I'm about to access the contents of a variable. Now, normally, the shell takes all characters up to the next white space as the variable name. In this case, because the variable name started with a curly brace, it will take all the characters up to the closing brace, including spaces, as the variable name. So to access that, I would need to retype all of that. Now again, don't know if that's the best practice, but you certainly will see some folks using it. So it's important to recognize what it is and how to, how to deal with it.